Welcome to our service this morning, and a special welcome is extended to all friends and visitors that are worshipping with us today. I just time to, um, I didn't do the watchword because before we did soundtrack, the watchword for Palm Sunday is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 14 to 15. The Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. And I'd just start out by saying thank you to everybody who's that prepared for today, for the Sunday, Palm Sunday service. We've got um, palms put out, we've got the different stations, and especially to Pastor Frank, who has starts Holy Week. I'd like to ask everybody to carry him in prayer um, through this week, because it's, it's a, a special week, but it's also a very um, difficult week in the spiritual time to be doing this. So I ask each and every one to remember Pastor Frank and his family because his family also sacrificed through this time. So that I'm asking special prayers for Pastor Frank and his family. But thank you to everybody who's participated in preparing for today. I'm sure that we will be led through a very, very special service. Also, thank you to everybody that's done the Easter egg um, preparation <coughs> and the crafting. It's been fun. Remember that the little hard eggs are supposed to be kept, so don't break them. Keep them. There's a little piece of hot wool when you buy them. Take your little piece of hot wool out, shake your sweets out, and keep it for next year. Obviously, we secretly hope you do break it because you're going to buy another one next year. But, um, you know, we said it to you in that it's a reusable Easter egg. But the Easter egg sale will happen straight after church as well. And, yes, it has been fun, and we hope that next year catches on. It's a tradition that will be new to many of us, but that, that we can grow on there. Um, Tuesday, we have garden cleanup. I know lots of people are at work and unable to help, but we are looking for hands, we're looking for spray, spray containers or spray apparatus that we can spray weed killer on the, on the um, driveways and things. So we really just are trying to have a garden work day so that we can get on top of the weeds that have taken over uh, in the last going with all the rain, etc. Then the important services for the week ahead. We have Monday Thursday on, six, on Thursday, 6th of April, which will be a combined service at St. Andrews. Um, that will be at 6 o'clock. <coughs> Good Friday, we have a service at 8.30 at St. Crucis. Then we have a beautiful sunrise service at Gamubi Point, so it's just in front of the Gamubi Hotel at quarter past six in the morning. It is lovely. Bring your hand chair, join us down there. We have some hot cross buns, we bring along some coffee. It really is beautiful and it really, we really are part of God's creation. It is a wonderful start to Easter Sunday. So that if we meet down there at quarter past six, and then, because then there's plenty of time to come back for Easter Sunday service at 8.30 at the church here. So, you've all got that, all got it in your heads and your minds. We hope to see you at most of those services, if not all of them. But as I say, we start of Holy Week, may God be with each of us.
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, why are you here today on this Palm Sunday? Who are you in the story of the Passion of Christ? Where are you on your faith journey at this moment? What do you actually expect of Jesus in your life? Do you expect him to be your own little miracle worker who makes everything better for you? Or is he to you like a distant relative that you are quite fond of, but don't see too often because you just don't have the time for him or her? Or are you here because you want to follow Jesus? Are you prepared to go wherever he goes? Are you someone who wants to learn from him what it means to truly live life to the fullest? If that is why you're here today, then you have come to the right place. Because today we want to do exactly that. Today we want to embark on a journey that begins with Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, but then does not lead to a throne in some fancy play palace where life is all nice and comfortable, but instead ends with Jesus stumbling out of Jerusalem again while carrying his own cross towards Golgotha. The path he chose so that you and I may have life to the fullest. That is the path that we want to follow today. By visiting different stations that represent different events on Jesus' path towards the cross. Starting with Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, as it is told by John in, a, in his Gospel in chapter 12, where it reads as follows. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it as it was written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Who are you in this story today? Are you one of those who has come to see Jesus maybe because you're a bit curious about this interesting man you have heard of? Or are you there because you have heard of the many miracles Jesus has performed and now you hope to see him do some more wonderful stuff? Or are you one of Jesus' disciples who, after following, following him for some years, still don't quite understand what Jesus is all about? Or are you maybe one of the Pharisees who doesn't like the way Jesus is always challenging the status quo? Does this Jesus maybe also not quite fit into your little box titled, My Own Personal Saviour? And hence, you would rather have him disappear at times because he is scratching just a bit too much where you don't want him to scratch. The congregation, I invite you to take some time now 
to think about these questions. Where do you see yourself in the story at the triumphant entry of Jesus? What are your expectations of Jesus? And what do you think Jesus might actually want to change in your life? you find those questions in your little booklets. At the end of, you see station one, at the end of this first page. And I invite you just in a, during a moment of silence just to think about these questions. And thereafter I'll give you some further instructions on how the rest of the service will come to you. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus, 
carrying his cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side, and Jesus in the middle. What a terrible path this friend we have in Jesus has chosen for our sake, for you and for me and for all of humanity. Just think of how much Jesus was willing to sacrifice for us. He gave up his godliness, all his power, his glory, his heavenly rule, his sovereignty to become this perfect servant of God sent to save us. But what does that really mean for you and for me here and now? What does the passion of Christ, the path of suffering on which we followed Jesus today, want to tell us? What is it really all about? I believe we can find an answer to this question in the Gospel according to John in chapter 17, where Jesus himself prays for all believers this wonderful prayer. I pray for those who will believe in me through the apostles' message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them, and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them, even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you. And they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them, and that I myself may be in them. The purpose of Jesus' sacrifice and death on the cross is thus to make us one again with God the Father, so that we may be brought to complete unity. In other words, Jesus died for us. That our original state as companions of God, created in the image of God, would be once again restored. Jesus chose this terrible path that led him to the cross so that the state of the world, which is like the garden of Gethsemane, a place full of fear, darkness, deception, <coughs> hatred, betrayal, misunderstanding, violence, injustice, and suffering may once again be turned into a garden of Eden, where life is defined by hope, by love, by acceptance, by trust in God alone, and by peace. That is the kind of life that Jesus is giving us. Life in close relationship with God the Creator and the Father of all. Eternal life. Life that starts with Jesus, Jesus who has chosen the path of suffering and death so that He can be with us, in us, and for us wherever we go, so that in Him we may find forgiveness and love and have eternal life. Amen. Let us now listen to the next song.
Let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, in your mercy, we come before you now, praying for your church and for all people according to their needs. We pray, God, be with us as we go into the Holy Week, as we seek to follow Jesus on his path towards the cross. May we be strengthened on this journey in our faith. May we find forgiveness and peace as we look upon you on the cross. And may we be encouraged to proclaim the good news of Christ through words and deeds to every person we come across. Lord, we pray, especially also for all those who are sick and frail, who are recovering from treatment or from an operation. Lord, may they be comforted and may you touch them with your healing hand. And Lord, we pray for your church and for each one of us. Be with us always and fill us with your spirit of life, hope and faith so that we may be a witness to your love and kindness wherever we go. And together we pray as you have taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today
And now go in the peace of the Lord. May the Almighty and gracious God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated for the postman.